let us know. So without further ado, welcome to Food is Medicine. As I mentioned, Allison's right next to me. I'm going to say, yeah, a registered dietitian nutritionist. I have it. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she's advanced her knowledge by becoming a certified culinary medicine specialist, certified in weight loss management. Allison is a fabulous person to follow on social media. If you don't, the virtual mm -hmm. diet, your virtual dietitian. Yeah. So, and, and we also, oh, go ahead. Dietitian has two T's in it. <laughs> no C. <laughs> and so I'm going to be sharing a link in the comments as well to a newsletter about with today's program mm -hmm. as well. And then Dr. Jason Epstein, as I mentioned, with Rothman Orthopedics, he's a board certified physician specializing in sports medicine. And he's done some really cool things. Like he's been the team doctor, a sports doctor for Embry Riddle. Who else here? Uh, Daytona Tortugas, <laughs> Legacy Dance Studio, the Cincinnati Reds. And I want to know more about what you do with SpaceX. That's pretty cool. Doing it, you know, cool. treadmill. So, yeah. So he practices here in the central Florida area. And, you know, he's very passionate about using lifestyle too for bone health, not only for preventing things or living with it. So I think you all are going to learn a lot from him today. So I will be in the corner. Somebody, everybody raise your hand if you need anything. But Allison and Dr. Epstein, I'll let you guys get started. All right. Why don't I go over with the menu first and then you can take a, take it away. How about that? Sounds good. All right. Good. Perfect. All right. So today what we are going to be making is, have you guys been to Starbucks and gotten those egg bites that are there? They're pretty good. A lot of my clients love them, but they're simple to make at home. And so I'm going to make a copycat version of those Starbucks egg bites. And I love going to um, First Watch. They have this trailblazer um, breakfast dish that has arugula. I wanted to incorporate some arugula, cruciferous vegetables into the plate and some roasted sweet potatoes. So we will be having the arugula with a lemon dressing and some roasted sweet potatoes. And um, I'm also going to be making a mocktail and a power um, bowl. It could be a dessert. It could be a, a breakfast. It's like, a, it's going to consider a peanut butter and jelly protein power bowl. And you'll see the little cups in front of you. These are different toppings that you can add to your power bowl to customize it for you. So take it away. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'll say uh, being in a kitchen is extremely overwhelming. <laughs> and I feel incredibly out of place right now. I just uh, kind of figured out how to make like dinosaur peanut butter sandwiches with my son. So That's my, awesome. You have those little cutting yeah, things. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm certainly not me like cutting it out. <laughs> I feel very uh, uncomfortable. Right now. Um, so uh, I think, what was it? Like maybe two months ago, I was out here to do an osteoporosis talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked a lot about sort of the medications and sort of advocating for yourself as a patient in terms of so, so common to have osteoporosis. It's so common to have an osteopro osteoporotic fracture. And so we talked about treatment options and how to sort of advocate as a patient to look for your risk factors and how to kind of get screened for osteoporosis. Um, and so sort of in the latter part of the lecture, we talked about treatment options and those had to do with weight bearing exercises and then of course, nutrition. So part of that lecture series had more to do with weight bearing exercises. And now of course, we're kind of transitioning to what can you eat or what's part of your intake um, to sort of help with reducing your chances for a um, osteoporotic fracture or sort of doing giving yourself your best chance at maintaining um, the right nutrients, minerals, vitamins, and sort of maintaining the best chances of optimal bone health, essentially. Yeah, so. I don't want I want to interrupt you just for a moment just to go over the technique oh, and this will be loud. So <laughs> um, I pre-made some of these or pre-prepped them. So, cause it's, there's 48 of them. It would have taken forever. I didn't want to have you watch me doing all that. So I just want to tell you what I did. So I wanted to do roasted sweet potato or roasted red peppers, but I didn't want to roast them myself. And so this is totally fine to get them out of a jar. So I just cut these up into little bite-sized pieces and I wanted to use scallions and I chopped these up with my herb scissors. These are awesome. You can just get little pieces of your scallions and I, um, chop that up. When you buy these green onions or scallions, you want to store them in water because when you finish using them, you put them back in the water and they will regrow. So you can have more green onions at least two or three times. So that could save you some money in your grocery budget. So I just put the, I sprayed the bottom of our pan with avocado oil spray. 
I like this because it's a less inflammatory oil. It can go at a higher smoke point up to about 400 degrees. And you could buy this in the grocery store or right now at Publix. In fact, the Pam brand has it BOGO. So the sale ends tomorrow. So if you want to get some of that, go get it today. And um, this is something I always have in my cabinet because I'll just take a sheet pan and I'll cover um, sweet potatoes or veggies with the avocado oil spray. And I know it can go at a higher temperature and um, not cause inflammation because it's going above its smoke point. Then I added some Swiss cheese to it. And I'm gonna now blend this up and one last thing. I Oh, in here I put the eggs and for an added protein boost and calcium boost, I'm adding cottage cheese. Now, some people are like, I don't like cottage cheese. The curds are gross. Try, trust me, you won't even notice that it's in there. It just makes it really fluffy and delicious. So um, that's the secret ingredient in that. And then for here, I already pre-cooked the sweet potatoes because um, it would take up quite a while in the fridge, but also when you cook sweet potatoes and let them cool down, it creates a resistant starch. So you're not gonna absorb all the carbohydrates in it. So I'm just gonna warm this up in the oven for you to serve with your um, dish. And that's about it. I'm gonna run this really fast so it's gonna be loud. <laughs> so um, I guess I, what I'll do is I'll sort of look at some of those items that you just mentioned and then kind of think about from a health benefit standpoint, how Perfect. that's beneficial from a bone health, Perfect. bone health. And then if there's anything to add, go for it. Right. And then if you want to use it later, you can warm it up. Uh -huh. And this is a resistant, resistant starch. Your body's just not going to absorb all the carbohydrates in it had you just had it hot right out of the oven. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I prefer the sweet potatoes more. It also can happen with rice as well. So if you have leftover rice, put it in the fridge and then you're absorbed. I don't know exactly the percentage less you absorb, but it does create some resistant starches in there. But those are fried. So, oh, I don't really know about that. I, maybe. <laughs> uh-huh. Awesome. So, um, you know, I think first and foremost, the thing I jump right to is the cottage cheese. So cottage cheese, I think when we're, when we're going for bone health, we're thinking about the calcium that's in cottage cheese. Um, and so there won't be a test at the end of this, but usually when we talk about recommendations for calcium, we're thinking 1200 milligrams per day. Usually a serving of a dairy product, usually on average is around 300 milligrams per day, a cup of cottage cheese, a cup of milk, et cetera. I don't, this one will be not that just to prove a point. No, I was just um, curious. So uh, I do like this brand though. It has probiotics good. in it as well. The good culture brand. It's good. It's my favorite. Um, so I, so when I like to think about like trying to track nutrition facts, and I'm sure you've been through this a lot when you're talking to patients and whatnot or, or clients. Um, it's very challenging to say, try to track 1200 milligrams of calcium. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's like totally overwhelming to me. I think it's completely overwhelming to patients. And so I think just focusing on bone health today, what I usually say is, so pick one of the things that we talk about today, calcium, vitamin D, protein, magnesium. And without changing your diet, just try to track that for like three days, just see like what your normal daily intake is. And that will give you a good sense of what you normally do, how you could potentially supplement that in your diet, or how you could supplement that with like a, a vitamin or mineral. Um, and so that's a good place to start, because I think otherwise it is completely overwhelming. Calcium is by far the most important aspect of bone health. That's what really helps you kind of build strong bones. Um, and so calcium is usually in dairy products. It's in a lot of leafy vegetables as well. Um, 
it becomes a challenge when you have other plain, maybe gastrointestinal issues, lactose intolerance, that becomes more challenging. And then you have to look more into supplementation with vitamins. But if you're able to have three or four servings of a dairy product throughout the day, you likely are getting the recommended daily allowance or the, recommend, the recommended 1200 milligrams of calcium um, for optimal or to improve bone health. So cottage cheese for one. I'll jump over to the, it's arugula. Yeah, the arugula, the and, dark green leafy vegetables yeah, so are great. Green leafy vegetables, calcium, vitamin K. We have yogurt in the power bowls. And is it true that your body can only absorb up to 500 milligrams of calcium at a time? So if yes. you're taking a supplement, you don't want to just load it all up. Yeah, so more isn't necessarily always better. Sometimes when you walk into the pharmacy and you see 9,000 bottles and they all start to like one up each other, this one's 600 milligrams, this one's 700. And so you think more is, it's got to be better because I need more calcium. Well, your body can only absorb 500 milligrams at a time. So if you're taking the 600 or 750 milligram bottle that for whatever reason is $10 more, it's not necessarily better to do that because you can't absorb it. You just excrete it anyways. Right. So 500 milligrams is a good place to look when you're, when you're looking at medications. Dr. Epstein, someone from home, Aaron said, how much calcium is per day recommended for women specifically? 1200 milligrams. Okay. I'm about to put this in the oven and I, I have a little um, tip for you. The way this makes it like fluffy, like um, what you would find at the Starbucks is they, you have put a pan of hot water on the bottom. So I just got the hot water out of the faucet. I put it on the bottom and it cr creates like a steaming effect when you're cooking it. And then I'm just going to put this on the top and let that cook. I call that mom hands. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. I, I would burn myself for sure. <laughs> um, so along with calcium, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll jump right back to the leafy vegetables. So leafy vegetables, calcium and vitamin D, or calcium and, and uh, vitamin K. Vitamin K is essential for the absorption of vitamin D. Vitamin K is something that we have to be cognizant of especially when we're talking about like bone health demographic population, because if you're on warfarin or Coumadin, that causes a serious issue when it comes to the clotting cascade. So you put yourself at risk for blood clots. I'm going to move this so you can see. Only if you're a patient that's on warfarin or Coumadin. It is not necessarily an increased risk for blood clots if you are not on that medication. So there is some... Um, questions or they put stuff out in social media about whether or not you should take vitamin K. That's certainly an important part of your diet, specifically with bone health. Um, now back to the calcium. So along with calcium, the second most important vitamin would be vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So dairy products and fatty fish for the most part. So we're adding a lot of dairy products today. Vitamin D is what helps you absorb calcium. So Without the vitamin D, you're not absorbing the calcium. So they have to go together. And when you think about, obviously, ideally, you're trying to get all of your vitamin D from your diet. But if you need to supplement, you're looking at vitamin D3 as probably the appropriate supplement. And you can also get vitamin D from the sun. So getting outside first thing in the morning and just taking a walk and Connecting with nature is always good. Don't go overboard, wear some sunscreen if you're going to be out for an extended period of time. I wanted to interrupt you to share with you a little kitchen hack to keep your produce fresher, longer. I get so frustrated when I get the spring mix and it gets disgusting like within a few days and it's because of the moisture that's in it. So when you go get home, just take a paper towel, pop it on there and put it upside down and store it in your fridge like that. And it'll absorb all the extra moisture to extend the life of your produce. Yeah. Dr. Ebbs, can you repeat the question for those at home? Because I can't hear. Yeah. So the question was about um, supplements that have combined calcium and vitamin D, if that's appropriate. So it certainly is. And that's been another one of like kind of the marketing or sales points with vitamins and supplements. Is it doing the combination packs? So again, calcium and vitamin D together is perfectly fine. And they do it that way because that's how you optimize 
calcium to actually work. So if you're not getting that vitamin D, you're probably not getting the calcium that you're taking in. So as long as, and again, they do that same kind of game when it comes to combining calcium and vitamin D, you'll see a D3 that's like an appropriate dosage plus calcium to like 800 milligrams. Right. And you just, it, it's okay, but you're not really using it and it probably costs more because it's a bigger number. <laughs> right. Vitamin K. Vitamin K is usually going to be uh, leafy vegetables. Are there any any other thoughts that you yeah, have? I recommend the dark green, dark, the darker the better. Leafy vegetables. Um, what was I going to say? I had a point. Hold on. It'll back, back to the vitamin D yeah. while you're thinking of it. The question from oh. home, if you said the amount, is there a, a recommended amount per day of vitamin D? Like yeah. Um, so 800 to 2000 international units daily. There is a lot of question about that and what could it go up to um i like to say whether it's nutrition or bone health or whatever i'm talking about in the office if there is debate about what the treatment or the optimal dose is it's because there's no real right answer right now and there's no agreement on this on what should be done right. if it was very obvious of what we should do we would all be doing it like don't right. smoke it's bad for you so we don't smoke Right. So if there was a good answer to that yeah, question, yeah. we would all know what the right dose is. That's why there's a range and that's why no one has the yeah. same answer. <laughs> and it's also a good idea to check your vitamin D levels because the upper limit is like a hundred. And I see a lot of my patients, even though we live in Florida, they're below 30 and they're deficient and you, they would never know. So when you go to your primary care, ask if they would check vitamin D levels just to see where you're at. And then, you know, do I need to add some more? Um, do I need to go to the beach for the weekend <laughs> or, um, you know, take a supplement. So certainly you can reach toxic levels of vitamin D. Um, but usually what we find is even in that 800 to 2000 international units daily, patients probably need more and could use more, but they need to be tracked. They need to be screened. So you need to have your primary care doc or whoever is managing or overseeing your vitamin D levels or osteoporosis. Um, they need to be getting vitamin D levels um, because there are patients that might be doing 10,000 international units a day, and that's perfectly okay, but you need to be screened and like have your, have those labs checked to make sure you're not going overboard because it's very easy to do so. Yeah. And can I go back to the calcium for a question in the comments? They were wondering if you can only take in 500 milligrams at a time, how long should you wait between doses? Yeah. So I, I, I kind of just say, make it as simple as possible, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, like three, four hours in between, allow your system to kind of digest what's in the stomach. Thank you. Yeah. Allison, a question on the greens. We'll, we'll get off the numbers for a second. Yeah. Do you rinse your greens when you buy them in those packages? I, these are triple wash. So I don't, if, if you're going to wash them, then you need to eat them right away. Cause they're, they're going to be wilted and, and nasty. So you can rinse them right before you eat it if you'd like, but I've never had any problems with bugs or any weird things in it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll make a comment on that too. Um, there, when it comes to like uh, canned beans or canned vegetables, um, oftentimes as a preservative, these these beans or vegetables have something called phytates in the can, uh, or the beans itself or legumes have phytates. And even though the substance that you might be eating or intake um, might be high in calcium per se, and that's why you're eating it. Um, the phytates in the can or in that vegetable itself prevent you from absorbing the calcium ideally. So that's why oftentimes we talk about like when you're using like canned, canned vegetables, canned legumes or beans to wash them prior to cooking with them or eating them. Because those phytates, it's kind of like you're not getting the most bang for your buck. You're not able to absorb all the nutrients that are in that vegetable or bean because of the phytates. And then also spinach is yep. another one with the oxalates, right? Absolutely. And, it, and um, so, yes, we talked about dark green leafy vegetables, but we're not including spinach in that. <laughs> so um, like cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, um, kale, arugula would be good, better choices. It forms oxalates and it, it prevents absorption. I mean, you could have it. It's just like, I wouldn't add it to my 
calcium rich dish that I'm, my goal is you have to figure out what your goal is for nutrition. Cause you know, yes, spinach is great to cause decreased inflammation, strong iron and all that stuff, but it can, you know, have a other impact when you pair it with other foods. I'm not saying spinach is bad. I don't know if it has necessarily more fiber in it. It has fiber in it and it's good. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying um, it can form oxalates in your body to not absorb the calcium. But if you're not having spinach at every single meal, like you're not going to have spinach with your yogurt, right? So you're spacing it out. All right. Yeah, it's uh, that's what makes, again, this a lot of these things super challenging. Like, you know, you'll see studies out there or they'll put out in the media like, Phytates are okay for calcium intake when you're use, when you're eating canned beans. The reality is is that you're probably getting more calcium if you eat the canned beans than not eating the canned beans. But it's better to wash your canned beans. So it's like all of these layers here. We could find good and bad about probably every single thing on this table. Totally. <laughs> and then that's not even including what your own personal medical history is and why you shouldn't eat this with that. So it's obviously very customizable. There's general recommendations. And then we, you know, we want you to advocate working with your physician, working with your doc, working with your dietitian about what makes the most sense for you and trying to do something realistic because when it gets too complicated, it just is it's not going to happen. Yeah. And here I'm making a simple salad dressing. I like to make dressings at home because then I know what kind of oils in it. If you go to the grocery store, you're going to see a whole like array of different choices. And a lot of them have inflammatory oils in the salad dressing. So you want to make sure it's olive oil, avocado oil. Primal Kitchen is one of my favorite brands to get salad dressings if I don't feel like or have the time to make the dressing myself. But I'm just showing you how simple it is to make a dressing on your own at, at home. My mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is easy, but it's really easy. Yeah, yeah. I know, but if you don't want to take the extra effort, fine. But it'll last for um, about a week in your refrigerator. It tastes fresh and delicious. So I really like it. All right. So one teaspoon. So, um, you know, looking at the mustard and salts. So just something to mention here. Um, you know, I think when you talk about bone health, again, you like to think about like a Mediterranean diet, things high in calcium, uh, things high in vitamin D. I know that part of our ingredients today are a pinch of a salt or some mustard, which has some salt content. I'm just globally speaking here. Salt, when you have, when you, you increase your salt intake, it's bad for a number of reasons. Obviously, people tend to think about um, salt with blood pressure and how it can increase your blood pressure. Um, what happens, though, is when you have salt, you excrete it by voiding. And when you void with salt or sodium goes calcium. And so for the sake of bone health, we'll say that when you have foods high in salt, you end up voiding or excreting a lot of your calcium that you just brought in. So uh, something to be I, mindful of. Uh, Himalayan pink salt, uh, you had said that it, it, you thought it had more flavor. So I started using that. Uh -huh. You could also use less. So is that a way of still having the salt? Or, or since there are big flakes or whatever, it, I, still, I still have to use salt. <laughs> um, yeah, I like it. There's different level, amounts of sodium in the different types of salt based on the size of the grain the yeah so um i like the himalayan salt because it's a bigger grain and i i tend to use a lot less i always add less salt to any recipe that i'm going to make because i can always add it in and the way to really really cut back on your sodium is eliminating the processed foods because they add so much sodium in there it's a preservative and it it's how it, they can keep it on the shelf longer so the processed foods are really going to drive your sodium intake so that would be the biggest bit of advice. And that goes to processed food, Western diet, 
soda, alcohol, sugary foods, bone health, calcium goes out the window. Like that, none, none of those things are good for you in general, but they don't help <laughs> with, with bone health in particular. So just something to be mindful of. See, so easy. You could do this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Super easy. All right. So I'm just going to dress this so we have it. And okay, we're going to be, let's talk about alcohol because I'm going to be making a mocktail. And how does alcohol affect our bones? So truly there is nothing helpful <laughs> about <laughs> alcohol. So um, it slows down the inflammatory or it, it, it doesn't help with inflammation. It doesn't help with absorption of any of the nutrients that we just talked about. And so you could eat all the right things, but if you're drinking on top of it, you're not really bringing in the right vitamins and minerals that you need to sustain good bone health. So, you know, in, in general, I just kind of say the more you can eliminate it, the better. Um, anything that you want to add to that? No, I, I agree with you. Pardon? And that cooks it cooks out the alcohol when you heat it up. So that is... Again, even with that, alcohol, caffeine, soda, diuretics. So it goes right back to you end up voiding all of the calcium. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple by focusing on the uh, calcium and vitamin D part of this for bone health. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's okay. That is okay. Yeah. Um, I think a good thing, a, a good thing to add right now, though, when talking about coffee is I, I, I frequently get questions about, so if you have coffee and you add milk to it, um, does skim milk, whole milk, do they all have the same amount of calcium? Um, and so from my understanding, they all pretty much do. Yeah. So that shouldn't be an issue or concern when you're looking. The question really then becomes, there are so many new milk products. So, you know, now the milk, milk, like section of the supermarket is more overwhelming than the vitamin section yeah. of the supermarket. So, you know, almond milk, soy, all of these products, most of them are fortified with additional supplementation. So even if they don't have it, they're added to it. You have to look at the nutrition facts though for all of these products to make sure they actually have it if you're looking for that added benefit. But yeah. just grossly with cow's milk, they all have the same amount. On the nutrition facts label, they're always going to have calcium on there. So definitely always look when you're across the board at all the different um, plant-based milks and things like that to see how, if it truly does have any calcium in it. And I would stay away from the oat milk just because it's it's like drinking a slice of bread. It's like ground up oats. I'd rather eat the oatmeal than drink the oatmeal. So I would stay away from that. Totally agree. Don't know why my sister-in-law likes it. <laughs> It's trendy. It's cool. So, all right. I'm making a mocktail. I chose this Spindrift brand because it the only ingredients is carbonated water and the fruit. A lot of the other ones, you'll see a lot of different chemicals and stuff in it. So this is going to be the purest form. And I chose a clear drink, not a cola, because cola leaches um, calcium from our bones as well. So, and I steeped some tea bags in some water and made a concentration of hibiscus tea. I am obsessed with this hibiscus tea. I got this at um, Publix. It's delicious. I don't know why they don't have a nutrition facts label on it. It's very frustrating. So I look at the ingredient list to see if there's a, any sugar added to it. Um, if you buy this pre-made in the carton, it's loaded with sugar. And I'm like, why'd you have to do that? So um, I just, boil my own and make a concentrate and put it in a big pitcher and fill it up with water to last me for a few days. So um, this is a brand I like. Oh, there we go. Tazo. It's just tea bags. Yeah. Just put it in boiling water. I'll take like 10 of them, a pot of water, just boil it up and last me for a few days. Nope. Mm -mm. I hate, I hate overly sweet stuff. So I wouldn't be drinking this. All right. So here is our mocktail. So we started with the tea base of um, 
of the hibiscus tea. And then I added the spindrift with the, um, <laughs> with the um, lemon flavoring. I wanted to add some fruit to it, some little pineapple and berries just to make it look cool. Yeah, it might be a little watered down so we could pass around some spindrift. We were trying to save some time. All right, there we go. I'm gonna, you always have to check your oven because sometimes it's there, it, it gets hotter in different areas of the oven. I could tell the back of them are cooking a little faster. So I'm gonna turn them around. So I'm just turning it around because I could see that the back ones are cooking faster than the front ones. So I want to have it evenly cooked. And there we go. I agree. <laughs> Dr. Epstein, while she's doing that, one of the questions at home was asking to elaborate more on why aren't you a fan of oat milk? Is there anything specifically? No, I was just joking. Okay. It's not personally my favorite. <laughs> if, if somebody personally prefers it and can't do dairy, I I, I wrote what Allison said about it's yeah. like eating bread, but. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. It's like carbs in one cup. It's good. That's like a slice of bread is, I'd rather have a crispy piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure it's gluten-free if you're gluten intolerant or you're trying to avoid gluten. So make sure that you're using a gluten-free oat. I tend to pepper in my personal opinion without... <laughs> That's totally fine. We need that. All right. So parchment paper is your friend. I do not like to, I, I love to get the kitchen messy, but I don't like to clean it up after myself. <laughs> so this is a great way to cut down on the mess. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pass around these, um, the arugula and the sweet potatoes while the egg bites are finished cooking. And you guys can get started on that. Did you pick sweet potatoes for any particular reason? I like that. Um, I like the. I'm imitating First Watch's plate oh. that I love, and I like that it has a lot of different um, nutrients. I wanted to talk about the resistant starch. It has magnesium and potassium in it, and um, what else? I feel like people don't like they go their go to is a white potato. So I wanted to show them. The flavors. Yep. Nope. I just cut it really thin and um, I just use my knife. When you're using your knife to cut, this is how you hold a knife. You want to hold it tight around the base and pinch here when you're cutting. You don't want to put your finger on the top because it's um, not steady and you could cut yourself. And you always want to make sure you have a sharp knife. Um, I I've gone to farmer's markets and there's this one guy, his name is grumpy. He's the knife sharpener. <laughs> he is the knife sharpener and he is a little grumpy, but he does a good job. And when I brought my knives to him, he's like, you're scraping your knife on your cutting board and making it dull and that you need to stop. So he told me to get one of these tools. It's a bench scraper. So when I'm chopping up a lot of my veggies, I'll use this to transfer it into my bowl. Yeah, so that'll save your blade for longer. So if you have a dull blades, you know that stick that comes with the um, knife block, that just maintains the blade. If your blades are already dull, that's not gonna sharpen it. You gotta get it professionally sharpened. They, he goes everywhere. I go to, I've heard he's in Winter Park. I live over in a Coe Windermere area. He's in the, on fr I know Fridays, he is definitely in Windermere. That's all I know so far. I, when is the Winter Park um, Farmer's Market? Saturdays? I would try the Winter Park one because I've heard he's at Winter Park, so he's probably at the... Yeah, he's... Yeah. I also heard Bass Pro Shops um, does sharpen knives for free. I don't know if that's still the case or that was my husband trying to get me to go to Bass Pro Shops with him. 
So we'll have to see. <laughs> so that's an option. Maybe call first if you don't want to deal with Bass Pro Shops <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> I feel like I have to get my knives sharpened now. You do. Yeah, probably. You do. <laughs> you want more potatoes? We got some. I like to have those potatoes in my fridge, just like if I needed a starchy vegetable for my salad, I could throw that in or side with my breakfast potato or breakfast eggs and stuff like that. So it's a good way to get some carbs because we do need carbs. Carbs are not the villain, but having a um, carb from a vegetable source is really great. I see you have skin on it. Mm -hmm. Is that supposed to get fiber or nutrients? No, it has more, it has nutrients to it. I'm lazy and I want to make it be fast and quick and get it on the plate. And, it, you know, I, I scrub it. I have this um, like a rag that's rough. So I take it and under the water and I scrub it to get all the dirt off. But God made dirt, dirt, dirt don't hurt. It's okay. <laughs> I like that. Maybe I'll start telling people. <laughs> Dr. Epstein, we had a oh sorry, we had a question in the comments from Judy about if there's a difference between vitamin K and K1. And what is the recommendation on the amount of vitamin K daily? Yes, yeah, so, so there's K1 and K2. Um, so K1 is really what's in uh, green leafy vegetables. K2 is what our body was what humans need. And so we do have an enzyme in our body that converts K1 to K2. There is, a, there is only a small amount though that you can actually take K1 in at a particular time. I'll have to get that answer for you. I don't know off the top of my mind you know, what, how many milligrams that is exactly. K2 really is the active form. Um, do you, I, do I don't know exactly the number either, but, um, but yes. Okay. K2 is kind of what you're looking for. K1 is typically what's sold because that's in more of the leafy vegetables. But now that K2 is kind of we, we've been able to produce K2. That is usually the recommended supplement. And K2 even breaks down even further. There's something, uh, if you get really into the weeds here, K2 MK7 is the recommended type of vitamin K. And I, I don't offhand know the recommended daily allowance, but that's really what you're aiming for. No, so so it, it's K1 and K2. K1 turns into K2 in your body. And the other one is a subtype. There's, there's, they sell K2, MK4, and K2, MK7. MK7 is, see, you asked. There. <laughs> so, so yes, it can get very, very detailed, very nuanced. I think most of the recommendations, if you're going to buy K2 over the counter, it's K2, MK7 as a supplement vitamin. That's, starting. That's huge. Yes. Too big. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So it all helps. It just all helps with absorption. It helps with absorption of vitamin D. Vitamin K also is what helps the osteoblasts. And in my last uh, lecture, I talked about osteoblasts are the cells that sort of lay down new bone. And so vitamin K. Uh, promotes the osteoblast to lay down new healthy bone. Okay. So there is benefit for it. Um, again, it's just one of those, you know, I, I think when you start thinking about, do I need to add vitamin K2? I probably would give the recommendation of make sure you have your calcium and vitamin D down first and that component of your diet is kind of in place and you feel like you're getting the right amount and your lab levels are normal or, or in a more normal spot than they were. Um, and then start working on the potassium and the protein and the magnesium because <laughs> there are so many components to this. All right, we've got our egg bites. I'm popping them out. I made the mini egg bites and this recipe makes 48 mini egg bites. So I would say about four to six would be considered a serving. So I like doing the smaller ones because they cook quicker. And at home, you could think of different 
ingredients that you want to add to your egg bites. You don't have to do the one that I did. So um, different color peppers would be good. Tomato, those all could be great. And how about, do you want to talk a little bit about strength resistance? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, on top of all, so normally if you have, oste if you truly have osteoporosis or you have had osteoporotic fractures and your T, your, your, uh, your T scores on your DEXA scan that you went and got um, are suggestive of osteoporosis, oftentimes the calcium and vitamin T um, for treatment of osteoporosis is not always enough for treatment of osteoporosis. And that's sort of when you get down the line of some of the medications. But one of the best things that you can do on top of nutrition is weight-bearing exercises. Um, and so oftentimes I just tell patients if they can get into and out of a chair over and over again, <laughs> you know, just keep it very, very simple using your body weight to get into and out of a chair. One of the best things that we look at is strength of the lower extremities. And so if a patient is able to get in, into and out of a chair over and over again, it's, it's, it's pretty suggestive one that they're able to do activities of daily living, like they're able to take care of themselves at home, but it also builds a lot of strength in your lower body. There are so many other exercises. There are so many, like there are so many different YouTube videos that just give you very good, very simple weight bearing exercises to do at home that I certainly recommend, you know, looking for that. Or I know here um, at the last talk, they, they, they brought a ton of exercises mm -hmm. um, to everyone. So, and there was an exercise class. So that would certainly be helpful. Um, I think part of the challenge with that is, is oftentimes people have osteoporosis, but they also have osteoarthritis. And so the two and two don't get, a, get, uh, get along uh, very well when it comes to weight bearing exercises. And then non-weight bearing exercises, because if it hurts to put pressure through your knees and hips because of your arthritis, it's really hard to do all of the weight bearing exercises. A lot of times I have patients work in a pool then uh, to take some of the pressure off of their lower extremities, but still get some good exercise in. And you all have a free day pass to the wellness center here. So you can get in there and talk to someone there about um, some weight bearing exercises that maybe you can learn to do at home or join the gym. Any question? Yeah. Certainly, it's helpful. So, I mean, again, it's it's trying to find that perfect individualized storm for the patient, right? So, if you can't do weight bearing exercises on land because of other comorbidities, getting in a pool. I mean, no argument from me. That's a fantastic thing to do. It helps with balance. It helps with weight, with uh, strength building. Um, and yes, it's not the same as being on land, but my goodness, if that's what you can do, do it. Yeah, so osteopenia is a precursor to osteoporosis. Um, the way you know whether or not you have osteopenia or osteoporosis is through a DEXA scan. That's a bone mineral density test. We have to do a photo oh. photo shoot. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, I can send it to you. So um, a yeah, bone mineral density test. That's the that's the standard um, screening tool for bone for bone health. And so it's usually suggested at the age of 65 in women. It is not recommended by the FDA for men, but that does not mean that men should not get it done. It means that they need to advocate for getting it done. It, if it needs to be done earlier than 65, it has to do with your individualized risk factors. Um, so that could be family history or history of recurrent fractures. Um, do you want to get started on no, the next one? And I'll fine. keep going. No, you can um, one. So when you get that DEXA scan, you get a T-score. A T-score is your bone mineral density in usually in the side of the femur and the low back. And if it is in a number usually between minus one and minus 2.5, that is suggestive of osteopenia, which is not quite osteoporosis, but you're trending in that direction. 
osteoporosis is any score that is less than minus 2.5. And you, they, they make, they have numerous measurements. The, your, the, whatever area is your worst score, that's your diagnosis. So like you could have minus one, one, zero, all those things. But if you got one minus 2.6 somewhere, osteoporosis. It's probably the combination. It's probably the combination of everything. So as we um, mature, as we mature, so as we mature, the water content in our discs, the discs are between the vertebrae of our bones. We lose water. Um, so we call it disc desiccation. So they dry up, so they shrivel. And so one, you lose less of that shock absorber between the bones, but you also lose bone mineral density and you start to develop that thoracic kyphosis. So you start to lean forward. Your rib cage drops, you, you slouch forward, and that's where the height component comes. The rib cage compresses the abdominal cavity. It makes it harder to breathe. You get constipated. Everything hurts in your back. It's a beautiful thing, maturing. So that's why we're doing this to prevent you from prevent that from happening. What's that? Yeah, it can help. Yeah, so you got to do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the reality is, is nowadays, especially like everything is in front of us, we're all on our cell phones, we're texting, we're on the computer. So we tend to neglect a lot of the muscles in our upper back and just on the backside of yeah. our bodies. And if you drive by a middle school or high school bus stop, they're all like yeah. this. It's so frustrating. So we neglect it. So whether we're talking bone health, osteoporosis, whatever age you, I mean, we all are have neglected posture, especially over the last several decades with everything being in front of us. So it's something that all of us can work on. Some of those posture, I'm not a big believer in the posture trainers. I, you know, I usually say, build the, build the muscle. Don't let something brace the muscle because once you take it off, you, you, you drop forward. Yes. Yeah, it's good. It, it's good protein and so. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, that's a hundred percent true. That was in my lecture actually a couple months ago. So, I mean, you can, you get your DEXA scan, getting one DEXA scan does not mean boom, done. Like you should get repeated DEXA scans. Um, and something I kind of, I mentioned at my talk is that once you know what your DEXA scan is, always know what your t-score is like have a have a put it on a card put it in your cell phone know what it is so when somebody asks you do you have osteoporosis what's your t-score you know it's you know shoot it off that's something you should know um just you know for really basic reasons you move your doctor moves you know what, what is it you know we know how things go in yeah this. <laughs> yeah um she was asking if the egg yolk was in the eggs and yes, and vitamin D is actually in the egg yolk, and the vitamin D is important for bone mineralization. So. No, it's it's good. It's fine. Yes, and in my chart, or I don't, or what EMR system do you have for pay, like for a patient portal? Would the T scores and all that be in their patient uh, portal for them to have? Um, it, so it will, it will not through necessarily our EMR, but yes, so through the primary care physician, yeah, they usually okay. would, wherever the test was done. Cause the report would go to them. So yep. they would be able to see it. I'm thinking it could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's, something to know. Yeah. Yes. It depends on if they're like pasture raised, cage fed. I forgot to mention to you guys, you guys got a special, special, special treat. These eggs came from my friend's farm. 
So they're like super duper on the taste scale and nutrition scale because they are like free, like roaming and happy eggs. <laughs> so you got a special treat. She was texted me yesterday. She's like, I've got eggs. I'm like, how much? Five bucks. I'm like, that's cheaper than I could buy in the grocery store. Give me two dozen. <laughs> so yeah. I like pasture raised, free range. I I'd, I'd buy I will buy Eggland's. I like the Vital Farms one, but now the price of eggs are so ridiculous. So you kind of just have to weigh the cost benefit. I just, I've found some that are in the $5 price range of Publix that are good. Pasture, free range. Although I just saw an article yesterday that they're starting to drop. Egg prices are coming down yeah, now. A yeah. little bit. Yeah. You don't like that, so. <laughs> <laughs> While she's doing that, Dr. Epstein, there was a question over here from Judy who asked, is it possible to reverse the numbers with osteopenia, osteoporosis, or are you only helping to stop it from getting worse? Yeah, some of the medications can. So I, I think largely the goal is to try to plateau the T-score to prevent it from getting worse. Because again, typically as we mature, we don't produce as much, you know, females, not as much estrogen, testosterone for males even estrogen for males. And once that hormone drops, it's kind of like this steady decline. And so the goal is to, try to sort of try to get it to plateau. Having said that, there are medications that do help somewhat with increasing it slightly. And again, if there was any agreement on which medication to use or why you should start it and when you should start it, we would all be doing it. But there's not, and there's insurance and there's other issues. And so that obviously causes all sorts of decision mm -hmm. pathways for this, which is why after these talks, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you talk about collagen and collagen supplements? Mm. I've, I've found some I like because they have multiple types of collagen in it. And it really, truly helped me with my arthritis in my foot from breaking my toe a million times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so to be honest with you, I, I don't find particularly like for like osteoarthritis that there's enough evidence right now to tell a patient to take co collagen supplements or chondroitin or glucosamine. Um, you know, a lot of patients are asking me, should I continue taking it or should I start taking it? Again, it's not one that there's like overwhelming evidence for, but they're not dangerous supplements. So I'm generally okay with patients yeah. taking those over the counter. If they want to start something, try something, I don't have an issue with it. If patients are asking me, hey, I don't really want to add another medication or vitamin or supplement to my cabinet. Yeah. I was like, All right, then don't. I I found it's been helpful for me, but it's the type you like. I had one with only two sources of collagen, mm. didn't work. Five and a good probiotic in it, definitely worked. So I think trial and error too, as yep. long as it's safe and um, approved, your physician's okay with it. And then bone broth, I was like, mm. people like always like, oh, but well, bone broth is so good for you. But to me, boiling a pot of bones just grosses me out. <laughs> so I probably would buy that over. Um, boiling it. And I thought, oh, this might be a good demonstration, but I'm like, no, I'm not bringing a big pot yeah. of bones and boiling it here. <laughs> empty kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I truthfully, I don't, I don't, I don't know much about the bone broth. Okay. Or, no. Yeah. It's just whenever you have your carcass from your rotisserie chicken, throw it in the freezer and then you could boil it. I don't know. That just grosses me out. But <laughs> But they do have like at farmer's markets, you see bone broth, especially, you know. It's enticing. Yeah. Well, if they, if someone else made it for me, I'm fine with it, but I don't want to have to go through. Don't tell me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make it loud in here. So hold on a minute. Okay, so what th I did with this, I've made this with cottage cheese before, but I didn't want it to be all cottage cheese center stage for this um, class. So I swapped out the cottage cheese for some yogurt. 
I love this yogurt because it's, um, it's just plain Greek yogurt. I sub it out for sour cream in some dishes for a little extra protein. You always want to look at the label whenever you're in the grocery store buying yogurt because some of them are as high in sugar as ice cream. And I don't know about you, I'd much rather have Baskin Robbins chocolate chip ice cream than fruited yogurt. So um, this is a way to get some fruit flavoring in it and not have all that extra sugar and stuff like that. So this one, it has total sugars five. That's okay, because there's sugar in milk products. It's the added sugars is what you want to pay attention to that's going to be under the total sugars. So you always want it to be a lower number, zero if possible, and you could add your own fruit. So to this, I added frozen strawberries. You can really take any berry. I added some honey to make it a little bit sweeter, some vanilla extract, and I took some protein powder or, or peanut butter powder to make it like a peanut butter and jelly power bowl. And I could have used regular peanut butter, but that just really, really increased the calories. Have you, any of you tried this peanut butter powder before? It's in the top shelf of the grocery um, where all the peanut butters are. And what I like about it, it's 90% less fat and it has protein in it. So in recipes that call for peanut butter, I may sub out half of the peanut butter and make my own peanut butter with this and reduce a lot of the extra calories from fat. So two tablespoons has 60 calories, six grams of protein. So, and it tastes really good. This is a great add-in for some smoothies if you make smoothies in the morning. And so I made these at home yesterday because I just wanted it to be chilled and cold for you. So I've pre-made them there. You can freeze them and eat it like an ice cream. So they're a little bit still hard. So you'll get that flavor of it, or you could just have it liquidy like this and you just pour it in a bowl. You're gonna see in front of you, I have put, put out different little toppings. So I've got some flaxseed that has been ground up because you don't wanna eat flaxseed as a whole seed because you're just gonna go right through you and you don't get any nutritional benefit. This has got omega-3 fatty acids in it. I also have some hemp seed and hemp seed is a complete plant-based protein. So um, it's got a nutty flavor to it. So I just wanted to expose you to maybe something you've never tried before. You can find this in the grocery store in usually the baking cereal section or organic section. And sliced almonds, they are very high in calcium. Um, so I wanted to incorporate some sliced almonds in there. And who doesn't like chocolate? I mean, come on. So I added a little bit of chocolate chips. I like the um, tiny chocolate chips because you get more of the chocolate flavor in each bite instead of the big chunks. And you don't eat as much chocolate when you're doing the smaller ones. Coconut, I love. And I wanted to add some fresh berries. So I threw some blueberries on there. So I'm gonna be passing out your bowls and you can decorate it, make it look as pretty as you want and enjoy that. So the um, hemp seed also has magnesium in it and gamma linoleic acid, which is an inflammatory um, component. And it's one study showed 75% decrease in pain related to arthritis after nine months supplementation of gamma linoleic acid. I don't know how much that they took in that study, but I saw that and I thought that was interesting. All right, so here we go. In the hemp seed, yes. So this could be like, you could do this for breakfast. You could be after dinner, if you're like, I want something sweet, um, but I don't want to go to Twisty Tree. It's, this could be something, because then you're getting some protein into it as well. And um, that can help stabilize your blood sugars too. Making sure you're not just having a sugary, sugary dessert, you're getting some actual protein in it. And protein's important for bone health as well. I have to say too, Allison led an Instagram worthy <laughs> class here in the nutrition theater and every influencer in central Florida has been making these ever since yes. sharing. So, so you guys are on the yeah. cutting edge of TikTok and yeah. Instagram right now. with me, so. <laughs> Yes. So I was just, I was just looking um, at the, the calcium. There's, there's 170 milligrams of calcium in a serving. Yeah. Three fourths cup. So go for it. Yeah. Protein in this one is 19 grams. That's fantastic. Really 
Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, calcium, vitamin D, and probably the third most important thing for bone health, I believe, is protein. So yes, always looking for ways to add in protein. I feel a lot of people don't get enough protein. So when you're looking at your plate, think, where's my protein? If you don't have anything on there, maybe add some beans, rinsed off beans, um, or some animal protein that you can add. Edamame, I love. Those are the soybeans. I buy them in the little individual packages and put them in my freezer. And if I need an additional, if I don't have enough protein on my plate, I'll throw some edamame on there for some plant-based protein. What are you doing this about? You went, darn. Uh, go you know, well, go so fake. There you go. <laughs> there we go. That's fun. <laughs> Dr. Epstein, we have a question in the comments about glucosamine yeah. for knees. If you had any opinions on that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, truthfully, I just, I don't have an opinion. Like there, <laughs> there is not a, a, if it was an easy benign supplement to add that really helped, we would all be doing it. It is a easy, benign, non-dangerous supplement to add. And if you have family members that are taking it or you're questioning taking it, generally speaking, it's fine to take. Um, how much it helps, we really don't know. Yeah. I don't have a problem with patients experimenting though with, with supplements like that though. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And while we're talking amounts, since we just started talking about protein, Allison or Dr. Epstein, what's the recommended protein amount per day? It depends. Like that's why you meet with a dietitian to do a, a really, there's so many things that contribute to what your protein and, and caloric needs are. So meeting with a dietitian to help you really navigate your customized um, intake. The RDA is pretty low. It's 0.8 grams per kilogram. So I think in kilograms, so yeah. you have to do <laughs> conversion rate. But I think I think you need more than that as we age, especially. And if you're you're doing uh, resistance training and weight bearing exercise, you need protein to help maintain that muscle mass that you have and build muscle. So really, it's hard to say just a blanket. This is what you need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, echo that comment. Zero point eight for norm is the normal recommended uh, daily allowance. Osteoporotic, they go up to like 1.2 milligrams per kilogram. But whenever I say things like this, I'm like, what the heck does that even yeah. mean? Yeah. Like, who, who thinks like that? Cal except for Calculate like a dietitian. Yeah, really. <laughs> Come on. It's, nobody thinks like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. there is a conversion to pounds where you basically like two, have two. the amount, yeah. uh, like whatever, whatever your weight is, that's sort of the amount of grams. Half of that in pounds is sort of the grams that you should probably intake per day. But, and I don't remember exactly, but you can only absorb X amount of grams of protein per meal. So if you're like, I'm going to make my dinner, my protein meal, that doesn't really work right. either. You have to spread, spread the love. I like so. to do 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And protein is going to help stabilize your blood sugar too, and help make you feel satisfied. So if you hit, sit and have like a, a carb heavy breakfast, you're going to be hungry in like an hour or two because you had no protein and fiber with it. So you never want to eat your carbs naked. You always want to add a protein source. So if you're having like a, a pancake, add some yogurt on the side or some scrambled eggs or some turkey bacon, like something like that to boost up your protein intake or get those um, pancake mix that has protein in it. That would be a good option as well. And tracking, like maybe track what you're eating using um, my fitness pal or one of those apps that you can do. And then you can look, all right, where are my gaps? What, what should I do to improve this? Where do I need to improve? Or I'm doing amazing. I'm, I'm a rock star. <laughs> but if you don't know your head's in the sand and then you're, you're in his office because you're falling apart. <laughs> that's sort of where I go back to like, pick, pick one thing for three days and just kind of without changing your diet, just get an idea, like, right, look back at the end of the day and say, what did I eat today? So if you had, this is uh, 220, or uh, yeah, 220 milligrams of calcium, if you had some cheese on something at dinner, and you had some yogurt, like that will give you an idea, okay, maybe I'm only intaking 800 milligrams of calcium a day, maybe I need to supplement, or maybe I just need to be cognizant of adding another dairy product 
throughout the day. And if you kind of look at that over the course of three days, you'll get a good sense of like, hey, I don't really ever have milk or dairy products, or I, it's just something I, it's not part of my like plan. That's not, that's not my meal plan. And so if it's adding a meal or it's supplementing in some way, adding a meal or adjusting your meals would be ideal, but it will be much easier to attack it like one by one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and just take a short period of time to say, what do I do? And during that short period of time, don't eat the healthiest you've ever eaten in your life. Cause that's not, that's not going to mirror really what you do. Just pick three days track your calcium, track your vitamin D on another day, track your protein, and then you'll know what you need to work on. Mm -hmm. And on Louise, you know, on my fitness pal, do, do they take track calcium on there? Okay. So that's an app and okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <You might... laughs> So, and just, yeah, you paper and pen, write it down. I like an app. Yeah. I don't want to have to Watch you. think, oh, like, I just want to say Sargento cheese. Boom. Tell yeah. me how much, you know? Yeah. So uh, this is what the hemp bag awesome. looks like. So if you're looking in the grocery store for it, it's on the top shelf, usually in the cereal aisle. And um, you want to get the not just the seeds. I accidentally got the seeds the other day. And so I get so frustrated because I have to grind them up whenever I want to use them. So buy it ground up and put it in your refrigerator to store it because it can go bad. So keep it in your in a dark, cool area. I keep it in my fridge and um, repurpose your jars. And it looks nicer on your shelf <laughs> and you're saving the world and not using extra plastic and all that stuff. Well, we're going to start to wrap up here in a final couple minutes. So Dr. Epstein, any sort of parting wisdom? I mean, if I could read through it, you said it's, you know, focus on one area, get started, but, yeah. you know, just kind of help give people a little pep talk on their way out. The yeah, door. and I'll echo again what I kind of said in my last lecture, advocate for your health, um, you know, advocate for screening for osteoporosis, be mindful of your nutrition, be mindful of your dietary intake for some of these supplements. Be mindful of sort of the exercises you're doing. Weight-bearing exercises obviously are more helpful. Osteoporosis is a dangerous, life-altering condition and really just takes one fracture to dramatically change your life. And so, you know, some of these things can get more complicated than we really need them to be. Try to simplify it, eat healthy, be mindful of what you're eating, talk to your primary care doc about getting screened, make sure you screen it, make sure you get tested again. It's not a one and done mm -hmm. and be healthy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Allison. Anything you want to say was wrap up? Just a variety in your diet, you know, just trying to incorporate more whole foods and less processed foods and thinking about how you can enhance your plate and crowd like I like to always add things to the plate and crowd out the not so healthy stuff so that's my a bit of advice well thank you Dr. Epstein you did great your first appearance in the nutrition theater welcome thank, thank you, you. <laughs> and we've put a link in the chat for those at home to Dr. Epstein's page on Rothman Orthopedics and for those of you here in the room our friends from Advent Health have some stuff for you so don't leave without that and be sure to check our website yourhealthandwellbeing.org as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages for more classes like this coming up I should have looked I can't remember off the top of my head what you're doing next month Allison we've got Oh, um, skin health. There we I go. Think, That's right. Yeah, I yeah. think it's more like PCOS where we're with a dermatologist, pediatric dermatologist. She was in a culinary medicine class at a teaching kitchen. She's like, I want to do this with you. So I'm like, come on, let's do it. So that's our next food is medicine. So yeah. if you're not able to join us here in the nutrition theater, that one again, we'll have a webinar. Mm -hmm. And again, for those of you that joined us late online, or those of you here in the room, we're going to be sending a video out to this the next probably 24 to 48 hours. We'll have links to Dr. Uh, Dr. Epstein. We'll have links to Allison. Mm -hmm. and we've got a links to Allison's newsletter on bone health. Lots of things for you guys to do to keep yeah. educated. So as he said, be your own advocate. That's the, you know, knowledge is the most important thing. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you.